Ethiopia. Minulik, Kedamawi Minulik, Minulik the first, Baina Lechem, Eben Hakim, Dagmawi Dawit, known as David, the second David. David had a son named Solomon. Solomon had a son named David, but Minulik, David the second, did not steal the Ark of the Covenant. I mean, I'm like, whoa. I mean, how, how many of y'all have heard that? Oh, the Ethiopians stole the Ark of the Covenant. Minulik, you know, first kings, Israelite king upon the throne in Ethiopia stole the Ark. I'm sure you've heard that. I'm sure you probably have said that, right? And they tell you, they say, oh, it's in the cabinet of gas, all right? Well, this is one of the first right here, here, here. You know, here up the front line books, you know, still love this particular co cover right here. The Queen of Sheba and the only son, Minulik. Right, there's this version right here. It's a very good version because we compared it with the Gutters. Because people say it's in the Kebra Neges. The Kebra Neges, that some say Kebra, but actually Kebra Neges. It's in the Kebra Neges, or some might say the Kebra Negas. The glory Kebra of Neges, of the kings. Right, this is like the first English translation, 1922. It's a very good translation when we compare it. You know, with um, the Gutters. You know, I, I liken it loosely to like the English KJV translation. It's not perfect, right? But it's, you know, from the English, you know, it gives you kind of a structure, you know? But I looked through that as well and didn't find any place where it says that Minulik. They said Minulik. Just saw a documentary, I think it's called Forbidden History. What was it season three? Season three or so, I just checked this show, you know, looking at some downtime, some documentary. So I caught it. I went to season three, you know. I said, oh, I should go back to season one. But something told me, you know, the Holy Spirit told me, just go check the season that was right there. I think it was season three or so, right? Season three or season four. But it wasn't the first or the second season. So when I clicked on that, I said, what, Ark of the Covenant? I said, you mean this show has been going on this time and it's getting with the Ark of the Covenant? So I checked it out. And checking it out, it brought it to mind again. I said, I got to do a vlog, right? And basically just state this as succinctly as possible. And hopefully, you know, ones and ones will start to do the update, you know, and the correction, right? That Minulik, the one known as Minulik, not speaking about Dagmawi Minulik, but Kedamawi, Kedamawi Minulik, the first Minulik, right? The son of King Solomon, right? Shlomo HaMelech, you know. Nagu Solomon of Israel, the king of Israel, the son of David, and Queen Makeda, right, of Sabo, of Sheba, their son, Minulik. Now he has a few names, you know, Baina Lechem, Eben Hakim, the son of the wise man, Eben Ben Hakim, but he's also known as Dawit, right? So we look at the Kevrinagas, and we don't find it anywhere there. Now, someone stole the ark. Well, it would appear to be so, but it was not Minyalik, right? It was not Dawid. It was not the son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, right, who stole the Ark, according to, right, the main point of reference, the Kibber Neges, right, according to the glory of kings, also known in the translation right here as the Queen of Sheba and the only son Minyalik. So this is for Minulik right here, 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 that Minulik, right, that dutiful son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. The first Israelite, we could say the first Israelite king, right, you are what your father is, right? <laughs> the first Israelite king upon the throne, right, of David. Even his name is David and he's the son. Remember, David had a son named Solomon. Solomon had a son named David, Dawid, David, David. Right? And David II, known as Minulik, right, as a, his, you say, Ethiopian the throne name, Minulik. Interesting, Manilek, Minulik, you know, what you said. <laughs> Minalik, Minalik, what you said. <laughs> Minulik, who can measure what, can, what you said, Minalik. Yeah, no, he didn't steal the ark. He didn't steal the ark. So let's clarify this right here. This is what this is about right here. So... We actually went, this is, this is our version right here, L-O-J version right here. Use this right here as, um, I think it was from old Jet or Ebony magazine back in the days, right, the glory of the kings. 
Kebra Nagas, the Kebra Neges, Ethiopian pronunciation, Kebra. I, you know, the, the Kebra Neges, Kebra, Kebra Neges, regular pronunciation, Kebra, Kebra. But it's the glory of kings. So this is our version right here, 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 you know, of this text. And not only this right here, it's a beautiful picture right here. You know, and this, this came back, this was back in the 50s or 60s right in a, in a black magazine i think it was was it jet or was it ebony i think it was by jet that jet magazine you know glossy color right proper right like the queen of sheba right here proper you know and even the garments you know attention a lot of good attention to details right here 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 but get a copy get a copy study it and read it and also we went to the gutters right here's the gutters right so here you can see the letters right here right the first is kbre, 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 negesite, neg, If you want to be a little more, you know, have it more guttural, neg, g, s, t, neges, neges, kbre, kbre, neges. Right, the glory of king. So here we have this right here. This is from a facsimile of the original Ethiopic manuscript right here. It was a jubilee printing right here, the Kibra Neges right here. So we have this right here where we actually read this and we can read this side by side, right, with the translations. So we looked at a few of the other translations because this is the point of reference. This is where we get the narrative from, right? We get the narrative from here. Now, also just to show this right here, let's see if we have this available right here. This is from the late Bernard Lehman. Right, let's go. Let's go all the way down to the to the very beginning. Let's see if we can get to the beginning of this book. You can see I'm looking up steel right here. Right now, this is also another book that we publish right here. Let's let's go out. Let's go out and come in. Let's go out and come in again. Right. Let's go out and come in again. Okay. So at 16, let's go over here to the the, the first part of this book right here. Here's the book right here. Right, here's the book, Queen of Sheba, right, the Queen of Sheba and Biblical Scholarship by the late Professor Bernard Lehman, right, we have this in the reprint, we give enough thanks, you know what I mean, you know, um, we say eternal, you know, ever living thanks, you know, to time indefinite thanks, because he gave LOJ Society permission, you know, we have that in writing, to reprint and to publish this book. And this is a very, very important book. It's a very good piece of scholarship right here for many reasons. But the one reason that we go into this book right here is just to re-emphasize that Minulik, right, the one known as Minulik, as the son of Queen of Sheba, Queen of Sheba's only son, Minulik, son of King Solomon of Jerusalem, of, of Yisrael, right, that their son did not steal, right, the ark. And the Ethiopians, by extension, therefore, you know, Sheba, Saba, so forth and so on, did not steal, right, did not steal the ark. And it's interesting how, I guess that's what they say, like a lie told over and over. People begin to accept it as true, you know, because I've heard this even years ago. And then when I read it for myself, I say, wait, wasn't it Azaria, right? Azaria, Azariao, right? So here he goes into breaking down, you know, the Kebra Neges, you know, going back to the original, the more, we could say, the, the, the original form of it, because there's an older, there's an older fragment. So there's an older fragment, and then around 1270, this document was used in the time of Yukuno, Yukuno Amlak, right? Be God, Yukuno Amlak, and the restoration of what's called the Solomonic Dynasty in Ethiopia, right? Um, but here, let's just share this right here. As mentioned, the Sheba Minulik cycle was translated into Ge'ez, Ethiopic, from Arabic. The original text has no reference to anything Christian, has no reference to anything Christian. Check. So the original text has no reference to anything that we can call in the latter days and time Christian or Christian. So taken with Josephus's text, which seems to be a summary of the Sheba, look at this right here, the Sheba Minulic cycle. So when we look at Josephus, no doubt he's speaking about Flavius Josepha, 
you know, Jewish historian, antiquities, you know, of the Jews, right? The Menulik Sheba, Menulik cycle text from chapter 21b of the Kivr Neges until the Queen's departure in chapter 31, it would appear that the Sheba Menulik cycle was written before the Christian era. Now this is this is what's important about when we study it. Because some will say, well, the Kevin Nagas 1270 AD, and they'll say, well, maybe it was written, you know, you know, a little before that time, but it's not very old. But they're not doing the studies that Bernard Professor, late Professor Bernard Lehman did right here. Right? As pointed to right here, let's go to this once again. As mentioned, the Sheba Minulik cycle was translated into is from the Arabic. The original text has no reference to anything Christian, so when taken with Josephus' text, Josephus, Antiquity of the Jews text, right, which seems to be a summary, so what Josephus is writing is a summary of the Sheba Minulik cycle, that means Josephus no doubt was familiar with the Sheba Minulik cycle, the older, right, we say the older fragments that form the core, that really form the core of what we know today as the Kevr Neges. Right? The text from chapter 21b of the Kevin Neges until the Queen's departure in chapter 31, it would appear that the Sheba Minulik cycle was written before the Christian or the Christian era. So when did the Christian era begin? That would be roughly like the first century, right? You know, the first century, all in the first century. So if this was written before, this is also further testimony to the accuracy as well as the authenticity you see because some would just look at you know we you know it's like it's like in ancient egypt they have what they call the per em heru what some call the book of the dead right but then there's the the thabian recension which is a later version but then there is the older version you know that go back you know hundreds you know even more than maybe a millennia before and then forget about the coffin text and everything Right. So what we're looking at here is also the Sheba and the Minulik cycle and the, the oldest, right, the oldest documentation and studying it from the available evidence, you know, in the, I think it's in Tigrinya. I think it has like Tigrinya or the Gutiz. There's a Gutiz version, right, that was preserved in, I think, um, northern Ethiopia. But anyway, the Sheba Minulik cycle pays a lot of attention to details. Check. A lot of attention to details. Well, of course, because we have to recognize where, even according to what is claimed in the document, it comes from. It comes from, you know, Israel. You know, when we say Israel, we're talking about Solomon, David, right? And that particular, you know, we say the royal order, <laughs> right? Then it was the Hebrew, right, Ethiopian connection. Right now we say Ethiopian Hebrews, but here the document pays a lot of attention to details. For example, the number of camels the queen brought, the security of the temple. Now, notice what we have in the Bible, right? In the the Bible in Kings and Chronicles. Now, Chronicles was written upon the return of the exiles, roughly around 500 something. Right? While what we have in the Kings is a older, even the language of the Hebrew shows it's, 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 it's more ancient. See, there's a different form of Hebrew. Those who are familiar with this will know that others might not see necessarily the differences. But you see there's a lot of details even in the, um, the Kings, in the Kings version. Right? So when we look up Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, even within the scripture, Right, we should you know pay attention and note right the attention to details right that is given right you know that is given um of the queen of the how is she mentioned here she's mentioned as queen of the south let's just do some check right here while we do this right here. in the new testament sense the queen of the south in matthew twelve forty two and luke eleven thirty one but then when we go to the old testament Right to the Old Testament, we have First Kings chapter ten, verse one. Right in in chapter ten, and then when you compare that with Second Chronicles nine and one, you look at both chapters. They appear essentially. They appear essentially very very similar, right? But it's the attention to details, 
we'll touch on that and follow up. But notice that the Sheba Minulik from the, we could say, the Ethiopian, the Highland, the Israelite of Ethiopia testimony, right? Like with the Torah testimony, focuses on the detail, number of camels the, the queen brought, the security of the temple, description of the Hekah, the Bait Mikdash of Shlomo HaMelech, the nature of the queen's religion, right, of what her former belief, religion was, the way that Shlomo Solomon had forced, right, the queen in Tibet, right, according to the narrative or the, um, yeah, you know, let's, let's reason on that. But here's the point. You see the highlight right there? Azariah, 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 he was the son of Zadok. Right? Remember there's a priesthood that we find even later on prophetically in the prophets speaking about the sons of Zadok. Right? The real sons of Zadok versus the Sadducees. The Sadducees is like a knockoff of what we're talking about, the real sons of Zadok. Right? And that connection with Ethiopia, but also with the scripture. And also Azariah is mentioned in right the Hebrew scripture but interesting enough he kind of disappears right there's some ones who are mentioned and then they appear in the Solomon and Sheba the Sheba and the Minulik cycle so you see where Azariah he is the one who had the ruse the ruse like you know the you know it was the Israelites who stole the ark not the Ethiopians right in other words it was on the Israelite side that the plan or the ruse, as it says, of Azaria to steal the ark was first formulated, right? Now, it's interesting to note right here, just a little bit more of what um, the late Bernard Lehman writes in this document here. Mm -hmm. The Queen of Sheba, the cycle right here. It is also interesting to note that the Sheba Minulik cycle does not mention, right, what the Sheba Minulik cycle does not mention. So here is looking at the the core document right the core document goes before the later version that is popularly known as the cover and the guess it's the core document that existed before as it says in the core documents there's no mention there's no mention of christian and christianity themes whatever why because it's truly a hebrew document so that's another testimony right that the israelites of ethiopia have but what's not mentioned now, Jewish records stating that the high priest had disappeared from Jerusalem during the ministry of Azariah. Once again, Jewish, modern-day Jewish and Judaic records, they state that the high priesthood had disappeared from Yerushalayim, from Jerusalem, during the ministry of Azariah, Azariah, right? Azariah, Azarius, as he's called, right, within the Ethiopic you could say translation and re-emerging check this out so we have remember Azariah who went with Minulik right becomes that you could say that priest he becomes that priest for Minulik and the Israelites of Ethiopia his father was Zadok right that we find as being that priest of Shlomo HaMelech of King Solomon in the Hebrew scripture but the Jewish records they state that the high priesthood had disappeared from Jerusalem during the ministry of Azariah, right, and reemerged 300 years later. Hmm. So where did they disappear to, and where did they emerge from? The Sheba Minulik cycle says that Azariah stole. Azariah, Azarius, Azariah. He is the one who stole the ark, the Aron Habri, the ark of the covenant, the Tabote, you know, the Tabote Kidan. Right? But does not press the point. It does not press the point, but it notes the point. And we even have this same point being made in the later version or the recension that was done at the time of the restoration of the Solomonic dynasty with Yukuno Amlak and Tekla Haimono circa like 1270 or so. Right? So it does not press the point that the high priesthood disappeared. So we get a testimony from Jewish Judaic records that we have access to today, right? As well as from the Israelites of Ethiopia, right? Testimony with the Sheba, the Minulik cycle that it was a Zariah. Who, who was a Zariah? He was the son of Zadok, the high priest, a Levite. So it actually was the Levites, right? Who had stole and the Kohanim, you know, the priests, right? Speaking of a Zariah that has stole the ark, it was his, you know, 
and many of the other fellow Israelites were like, we're going to go into this country and know nothing about this Cush land. You remember Cush? You remember Miriam and, and Aaron and, and Moses' third wife? I mean, Moses is his, 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 his second wife, actually. The, Cush, the Ethiopian and what happened. So they might have had the ideas. They didn't know what to expect. Right, and they felt being sons of the priests that they would be like separated from the presence, you know, the closest um, contact that close contact was in the temple and particularly in the Holy of Holies and particularly with the Ark of the Covenant, as the Torah says, between the Kepra, the Kepra, the Kepraim, the Cherub, and the Kirubim, right, and above the mercy seat. Of course, make sure you have that Aishans, you know. So the Sheba Minulik cycle explains how the Ark was stolen, but makes no reference to the subsequent silence about the matter in Jewish literature, sacred or otherwise. Isn't that curious that in the existing Judaic literature, right, especially the most ancient of the literature, right, the Latter-day Jews, in a sense, I won't say inherit, but that's what they use as their point of reference, that we have a silence about this. The Sheba Minulik cycle does not list the Torah in full, right, which indicates it probably was not fully developed when the Sheba Minulik cycle was written. But it does mention certain key areas of certain key commandments. Don't go through a full narrative, what they're saying. Aforementioned, the parts it quotes are considered the most ancient. So the fragments that are quoted that we find in the Kibber and the Gas are the most ancient, are the earliest portions, as we have in Numbers chapter 33, verse 2, right? And Moshe and Moses, he wrote, right? You know what I mean? He wrote, <laughs> you know, so these early parts. Lastly, but not leastly, the Sheba Minulik cycle makes no mention of the disasters that befell Yisrael, Yasharala, and Yehuda and Judah at the hands of the Assyrians and Babylonians. That means that the Sheba Minulik cycle, if it was a later day thing, it would make mention because you cannot escape that. But because it makes no mention, right? shows and proves that it was written before that time further testifying to that 900 roughly between 1900 and 1000 is roughly around the time of the visit right in the 900 bc right of the queen of the south the queen of sheba right to jerusalem to shlomo Melech. so there's no mention of the later disasters that would befall yisrael yasharalo the syrians and the ten tribes going to captivity or the yehudi even we the black jews of the line of the tribe of judah going to captivity on the babylonians or the 70 years had it been written at a later date the authors would certainly have used these catastrophes why they could elaborate on the points raised in the vision of Shlomo, Solomon, Solomon had this vision that the covenant of guests records, right? So the obvious that if this was written like later on, like many of the pseudo scholars and pseudo consensus academics want to claim, right, to that particular point, then if it was written later, why didn't they make mention of these catastrophes? It would have been a perfect opportunity. Right? Somebody says, I have a vision, something's going to happen, right? And then later on, it happens, and then somebody talks about it later on, they must have talked about it after the fact, but then if somebody talked about it before these catastrophes happened, before the fact, you probably won't find that fact there because it was before the fact. This is what he's saying concerning the authenticity and ancient of the core elements of the Sheba Minulik cycle and the oldest parts of the manuscript. Had it been written at a later date, the authors would certainly have used these catastrophes to elaborate on the points raised in the vision of Shlomo. So after he took, in a sense, you know, the Queen of South Makeda, you know, he had this vision, right? That divine grace deserted Hamelech, deserted the king and his realm, the Malkut, Malkuto. On the night, he bedded the queen. Now, I know some of the one Westerners would have something to say about this, but we can pick up on that at another time. Last part of this paragraph right here. Taking all that into consideration, it is therefore extraordinary that the Sheba Minulik cycle's account of Minulik's escape with the Ark. See, Minulik, the son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, he thought that he had a replica 
He thought he had a replica because the narrative states that Shlomo had created a replica so that the Israelites and his son and his seed, they can be a kingdom. They can be a kingdom. So Yisrael had a kingdom, a hidden empire in the tops of the mountain, like Psalm 87 verse 4 says, Im kush ze yulad sham, with Ethiopia, this was born there. Right? So the account of Minyas' escape with the ark, even the narrative says that later on when it was shown to him, right, and told to him that the ark, the real, you know, the, the ark, the ark, 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 was with him, you know, he was he was surprised. So if he stole it, why well, we'd be surprised if you stole something and you caught with it or somebody tell you what you got, you understand? You say, yeah, yeah, no, I, I took it, but he did not take it. So Menulik did not steal. Ethiopians, right? Menulik did not steal the ark, get it straight, get it right. In fact, according to the Kevr and the Guess, both the later recension, right, and the earlier, you know, the earlier, you could say the earlier scrolls, proves that it was a Zariah, right, the Levite, right, the son of Zadok, the high priest under Shlomo and the Solomon, right, the other Levites and the other priests as well, we could say the Israelites, the Levites and the Israelites actually, that generation, the thousand firstborn sons, remember all these were firstborn sons, there's this Phineas battle against the Median connection and Solomon's pursuit seems to make absolute nonsense <laughs> Solomon's pursuit seems to make absolute nonsense I got you curious right check it out check it out get a copy of this right here right there's also this part right here a kind of a likeness here you know concerning you know the stolen right reference to the Aksumite theft of the Ark of the Covenant right and then secondarily to the Christians in the new the Nazarenes as a whole for allegedly stealing the Christ's body. That's what was claimed that the Nazarenes later to be called Christianoi that they stole Moshe's body. So when the, the Nazarenes, the disciples and the apostles and those who had faith that Yeshua Ha Moshe, Yeshua is the Messiah, they said he is risen. He is risen. You know, Kam, Ha Adon Kam that he has risen. They said no, 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 he didn't rise. It was the disciples who stole the body, right, from the tomb in order to convince doubters that he had risen from the dead. Note this, it's the same thing they do when they say that the Ethiopians, Menelik, you know, stole the ark. Oh, the Ethiopians claim they stole the ark. They stole the ark. It's written in the cupboard and the guess. And I say, wait, are these people cognitive, cognitive, you know, cognitive, um, dissonance or cognitively dyslexic dissonant you know dissonance can't they read i mean throughout the narrative it tells you who took it and who stole it and it was Menelik that was surprised that was there he thought he had the replica that his father was said to have made for him right so right here 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 one 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 little part right here we'd like to get into more details right here but the zadokites so we know about the zadokites zadok Sadok, righteous, like Melchizedek, that linked order Melchizedek, king of righteousness, the priests, the Zadokites, had endured for 300 years in disfavor for losing or and or stealing the ark. Right? So when you get into the real, you find that the Zadokites, right, the Zadokites was a Zariah, his father and his brothers who were left behind when he went with Menelik and the 1,000 from each of the 12 tribe, the 12,000 Israelites of Menelik, right, and the Ark of the Covenant that he had, quote, right, so-called stolen. So the Zadokites who were left behind, they had endured, it says, for 300 years in disfavor. See, it's a shocking thing that you see Zadok at one point, it's like he's in favor, but when you read the, the Hebrew Bible, it's like, like it says here, they fell into disfavor. But it doesn't explain why they fell into disfavor, right? For losing or and or stealing, right? Because remember, Azariah would have been Azariah, what Ben and Zadok, his father Zadok, right? Like stealing the ark. It is unlikely that they would have mentioned it in the sacred text. They subsequently collected and amended to create what we know in the fullness as the Brit Hayashana or as the Old Testament or as the Torah, the the Nabim, the prophets and the Ketubim or some say the Tanakh. 
right one other area right here this is what we find right here right this is some some highlights right here the Israelite Torah Queen of Sheba and biblical scholarship LOJS.org or look it up Queen of Sheba biblical scholarship you can go get it from LOJS.org the Israelite Torah according to the Sheba Minulik cycle so here we're looking at the we can say the older version right or the original version right that was built up for the what we have today as the Christian so we have a Hebrew Kevranagas or the Sheba Minulik cycle. Then we have the later 1270 AD Kevranagas that, that now brings in more of the Nazarene or the Moshiach or the Christian Christianoi themes. Right? So just to scroll down here to chapter 42, right? This is what was told to them, right? Respect only the one true God. Don't worship material objects. Don't make a false oath invoking God's name. Respect as holy the seventh day of the week and do no work that day. Treat your parents well. Don't have sex with somebody else's wife, someone else's wife. Don't kill anyone. Don't have sex outside marriage. Don't steal. Don't give false testament. Don't desire anything that belongs to another person. Right? And then it goes on further here, here, here. Right? So right here, once again, we're at the top of this, as you can see this right here, page 92, right? And we went through this already, that it was Azariah, Azariah, the son of Zadok, right? That stole, right? Or if you want to say, stole the ark, right? So here's our cover and the guest right here, LOJ Society reprint. We also have the gutters available for the scholars. It's a very good frontline one right here, classic. Love the cover right here, the Queen of Sheba and the only son Minulik. This is the classic pick right here, you know. Yes, you know, yes. So we also have this version too, which is an interesting one by Miguel F. Brooks right here. One thing we note right here is that the Ark of the Covenant that he used, the carrying poles, we see them as being in the right orientation. What appears from our study of the text to be the right orientation. Usually they have the carrying poles the other way. But this is also a very interesting translation as well. The true Ark of the Covenant. The Kevranagas right there. This is our Gutters, the reprint right here. Where you can use it to study side by side. We'll recommend the um, Kevranagas, the Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik, as a side by side study. Right here we have the the... Um, St. Mary of Aksum, right? Also the church, right? That brother Siddiqui, Ra Siddiqui built right here to house the Ark of the Covenant, the new church right there, right? Showing this right here, kind of a screenshot right there. Is the Ark in Ethiopia? Let's follow up on that. Is the Ark, are they protecting, guarding the Ark, or are the Ethiopians? Why the latter day Ethiopians are they guarding a tradition? Are they guarding an ancient tradition? The Ark's escape route. This is said to be mentioned as the Ark's actual escape route. Compare and contrast that as it were. You know what I mean? We have it from Jerusalem, right? To Elephantine, right? We have it to uh, Tana Kirkos, right? We stayed for about 800 years at Tana Kirkos. Stayed on this island for 800 years and then being moved to the church of Kedist Maria Zetzion, right? Roughly around 338 AD, which is interesting. We look at when Ethiopia became Christian, the state religion became Christianity, but the faith was already there even from Old Testament times. So just showing you some of this right here on the Ark, on the Ark of the Covenant. Once again, you know, share the word, like, share, and subscribe. Minulik, according to the Kevrana guest and according to the testimony. Minulik, the son of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba, Makeda, Negist Makeda, right, did not steal the Ark. Right? There is no validation for it. This is also a good orientation of the carrying poles right here, here, here as well the ark the ark of the covenant a pretty good representation even the kepra i mean the kirubim you know as we see right there 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 and here 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 shalom habarim shalom this is ras ayadonis tafari this is yadin yadon ben chayil 
Ben Kush here, 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 and we approve of this video. So please share it so we can get the narrative right and accurate. Right, the Ethiopians right did not right steal the ark. Menelik, the first Israelite king in the highlands, tops of the mountains, Psalm 87, verse 4. With Ethiopia, this man was born there. He did not steal the ark. If anyone stole the ark, according to the narrative, Azariah, the Levites, and maybe some of his fellow brother priests. And the reasons are also stated in the cover of the guest. So get a copy, get a copy. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom.